What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks MLB edition. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. You become a prize whenever great betting content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. I've done a bunch of Masters golf content for today. I've got another massive NBA slate coming up for Wednesday, but massive 14 gamer on tap here for baseball on Wednesday as well. Uh, so much sports, so little time. So uh, let's just fire it up. Uh, I'm going to get right to it. Don't forget tomorrow, everything locks really, really early. Uh, the last game of the night is at seven. It's just after seven o'clock there, that Toronto, Kansas City game, uh, Eastern time, that is. Everything is happening in the morning on the West Coast, uh, the afternoon. It's like one o'clock baseball basically kicking off on the East Coast. So be ready to fire immediately. It's going to be great stuff. If you want to know exactly what my betting card ends up being, you can sign up for that in the video description box below. I can talk you through every single part of what I'm looking at there in the MLB streets, the NBA streets. Uh, nice that there's a little bit of a break up there where I can kind of focus on one, then focus on the other tomorrow. So looking forward to that. And if you want to get yourself a, a guaranteed W going into tomorrow, go to Bet365 if you're in one of these four states, Colorado, New Jersey, Ohio, or Virginia. If you live there, you deposit $10 in the video description box below at that link. You bet $1 on anything, you're going to get $200 in bet credits. Hard to beat that. Take advantage of that. I'll talk about it a little bit later. But as I said, no time to mess around here. So much to get to. Let's get to the fix. We get our day kicking off, getting going with Chicago facing off with Cincy. I feel like we've seen this situation a lot here the last couple days, but this is an interesting one. Marcus Stroman going for round two against my guy, Hunter Green, for round two. And one looked a lot better than the other in their de debut, and it's not who you would expect. Hunter Green still finding strikeouts, still found a way to get there in that regard, but giving up that hard contact, 42.9%, just seven batted ball events. The walk rate, got to figure that out. So does Marcus Stroman, but again, I'm not too concerned with that because he was awesome against left-handed bats and found strikeouts for the Cubbies there. So that's kind of what you're looking at going into Cincinnati, and we've seen some inflated numbers. Talked about the improvements to the Cubs offense, and Cincinnati on the other side. They have some serviceable lefties, but you're seeing reverse splits for Marcus Stroman. It's pretty pronounced, so I'm actually leaning the under of 8.5. Do I want to screw around in the first game of the night with Great American Small Park? Probably not, but it's something to at least consider because Hunter Crane, please get back to form. Triple A form, that'd be great. He's going to strike out a ton of dudes still this year. So Hunter Green, I think we can back him possibly with Marcus Stroman, but haven't bet it yet. Next game on the agenda, we head to Yankee Stadium for an absolute doozy. You got Garrett Cole on one side of the mound. You got Aaron Nola on the other. Let's start with Nola because he really struggled that first game out against Texas. Wasn't an absolute masterclass pitching performance or so you thought going with Jacob DeGrom and oh boy it went south just three and two thirds innings five earned runs went through some of his data thought I would find something a little bit more pronounced than I did but I think it was just a hiccup kind of situation the problem here is that you have to face off with the Yankees offense and I don't know if you noticed they're kind of good at hitting baseballs hard and far so Aaron Nola Probably not a spot to look for him to get right immediately. Maybe you find the K rate start to surge a little bit. We'll have to see where those numbers land when we see props tomorrow. But Garrett Cole on the other side, very impressed by what he put together right from the get-go. Uh, six earned, 11 Ks, completely shut down San Francisco. San Francisco, though, I think is going to be pretty gettable in the K department all season long. They have a 31.6% K rate through just their first four games there. Uh, that leads all of baseball. Again, we have such small sample sizes for a sport that's going to have 162 games, so we don't want to go too nuts through like four and five game sample sizes for a lot of these teams. But good for Garrett Cole. I still think with Philadelphia, they have enough ammunition on the other side. And you know books see Garrett Cole and Nola, and so does everybody else. And they assume you want to take unders. So there's six and a halfs that are hung up in some spots. And when you start breaking down six and a halfs long term, in a stadium like Yankee Stadium, I think we're going to be looking at an over in that direction too. Do I want to pull the trigger? I don't know yet. Yet another lean for me. It projects out nicely. I just don't know how I feel about seeing Nola and Cole. Same reason that everybody else is going to be taking unders. Maybe I get some better numbers coming into uh, Wednesday morning. We went lean. We went lean. How about something I actually like here? We've got Tampa Bay facing Washington and 
Are you watching all these games of play? I mean, Washington's finding ways to be serviceable. They're not going to find ways to be serviceable against Shane McClanahan. Going up against Patrick Corbin. One of these pitchers is not like the other one. And I'll let you guess, it's McClanahan. So just go with McClanahan. Looked fantastic going up against Detroit. Gets another cream puff matchup here. I mean, I don't know what to say against Detroit. Six innings pitched. He pitches in a fantastic park. I don't think Nationals Park is all that difficult when we're talking about early spring baseball in the beginning of April. Maybe come summer, you have some concerns, but this lineup is still not good on the Washington side. And McClanahan, everything looked good with Velo. Everything looked good for me to just be backing him immediately here. And Patrick Corbin does not look good like you would expect. Just completely dust. Can't believe he's him. Uh, what are we even trying to accomplish here? I, I should just move on. Three innings pitch, seven hits, nine ground balls. Yay for that. But didn't really find the case. 85 pitches got completely lit up against Atlanta. A lot of teams are going to get lit up against Atlanta. I think Tampa Bay is going to be one of those teams that I'm going to like more against righties. Seems as though, I mean, I know G-Man Choi is gone and left to Pittsburgh, but there's still some pieces in this Rays lineup that look and profile, whether it's Fraley, whether it's, you know, even a Rosa Reina going up against righties. I like that. Manuel Margot, a little bit utilized against lefties. So again, I think against lefties, there's certain bats that still look all right. You're probably going to get Harold Ramirez into that lineup at some point in time here. Uh, Paredes, I feel like Tampa Bay, we just have to be backing them immediately, mainly because of McClanahan and also because you don't believe in Washington. It's minus 135 to be uh, backing them on the run line, which might sound steep. But I don't think it's enough. I would have this more in the minus 160, minus 165 range. So on this card, with the numbers we have available, that goes in the lock category. Yes, one of two locks that I have on the MLB card for Wednesday. I think McClanahan just shuts it down. Don't want to be messing with the total still. Could see this one being a 6-1, 6-2 type game here for the Rays. So I'm not going to be messing around with that. But I think McClanahan shuts down Washington in a pretty pronounced way. And Tampa Bay covers that run line. My Minnesota Twins going up next here, and hey, Pablo Lopez on the mound looked great in his debut going up against Kansas City there. Absolute schlacking. 8Ks, 5 and a third, 85 pitches. Again, pitch count is really what I'm the most concerned about. Don't want to fall in love with too short of sample sizes. Still taking 2022, carrying it over. But this is kind of a revenge spot for our guy Pablo. Used to be in Miami, now he's in Minnesota. That's what revenge means. Look at me defining things for you. But on the Miami side, there was also a stud. His name's Jesus Lizardo. I love this guy, and yet I did the blasphemous thing. Tried to short him. What am I doing here? What, what am I doing here? Went with Peterson in that spot. We'll talk about him next, too. But uh, they want a close 2-1 ball game. Jesus Lizardo gets in the win column early. Just 5Ks, 4 walks is the one thing that I'm always paying attention to there. But 91 pitches for the young arm. I like him a lot. I always have. And going up against my Twins, I think there's going to be strikeouts available up and down that lineup as things continue on. You neutralize Gallo, who's been on a tear early on in this season. That's been enjoyable for me. But I'm going to actually lean towards Lizardo, plus one and a half. More of a parlay piece, but... I'm not really going to be firing up anything in this game. It's such a tough ballpark to get a, hand, uh, get a hang of. Both pitchers looked really, really good. Thought about it under, but it's not projecting out as well for me as plus one and a half on the Miami side. So again, not a homer. Not going to be backing my team here. Probably going to be Miami or nothing. Surprise. I don't know. I don't like this face, but I love this deal. Bet $1, get $200 in bonus bets at Bet365. It's an extremely reputable sports book. It's available in just four states right now. They're looking at launching in other places very, very soon. So the other 46 states of us will be very happy. But those four states being Colorado, New Jersey, Ohio, and Virginia. If you're in one of those four states, congratulations. Sign up in the video description box below at the link. Deposit $10 or more. You're going to bet $1, just $1 on anything, and you're going to get $200 in bonus bets. That is a phenomenal, phenomenal deal. There's no strings attached to such things. So, bet 365, damn good fine. Let me sock it to you one more time. If you're 21 and over, please go over, check it out. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. All righty, y'all, back to the picks. To St. Louis we go for a pretty interesting spot because Bryce Elder, we have not seen here yet this season. Going to be filling in for Max Freed at the moment until he gets back. 
Uh, just a soft tossing righty there. Going up against uh, St. Louis's own Miles Michaelis, who did not look like the chosen one, did not look like a good investment here at this point in time. 10 hits, three and a third, completely blitzkrieged by the Toronto Blue Jays. 90 pitches, there's one inspiring thing, but he goes from one difficult matchup to another difficult matchup up and down this Atlanta lineup, whether it's Matt Olson, where he's going to benefit mightily this entire season with no shift. Michael Harris, Ronald Acuna, Austin Riley there. I know it's right on right, but still, everything about this Atlanta team is going to be just a powerhouse offensively. It's a decent enough ballpark to be pitching in, but didn't go well for him the first time around against Toronto. Not feeling all that inspired, although nothing was drastically different in terms of his pitch mix. It was kind of all over the place through a lot of four seamers, a lot of sinkers, pretty much an even split between that, his slider and curve. So whatever, we'll see how it kind of goes long term for him here, but obviously wouldn't be going crazy with him by any means. And Bryce Elder on the other side, we saw him last year, limited hard hits, 34.4%. That was decent enough, over 154 batted ball events, but just a 20.7% K rate, 10% walk rate. Those things will get you in trouble with a St. Louis team that has power. And now it's also from the left side between you got Alec Burleson starting to show up. He's been batting second there from the left side. Nolan Gorman, second baseman that was a high profile lefty. Uh, hitting with some pop, did Homer a couple days ago. We'll see how he profiles as this season goes along. And then Brendan Donovan as well. So there's enough pieces from the left side now where Bryce Elder, it's not going to be a fun spot. Not the Elder Wand from Harry Potter. I didn't know what to do with that joke. So we're going to just continue on to a play that I actually like. The over of eight and a half here. I don't believe in either pitchers. I think with an afternoon baseball game in St. Louis, a little bit warmer. Not some of those evening spots in St. Louis. You get a little chilly there. Look at me talking about weather. What a time to be alive. Over eight and a half runs, afternoon baseball. To Fenway Park, where all there are are runs. My God, they're going completely nuts again today. 3-1 through you know, four innings here at the moment. Wild stuff we're seeing just runs all over the place. But you got the Pittsburgh plus one and a half across the other day. little sprinkle on the money line for those who watched the video. That was great stuff. Yesterday, I mean, talking Tuesday, I didn't bet them. But either way, we're looking at a pretty interesting spot once more. We've got on the mound from the Pittsburgh side, we've got uh, Mitch Keller, it is, going up against Corey Kluber. And Mitch Keller rhymes with old Yeller. Both of them have been just, it's not good. It makes you sad. Four and two-thirds innings in his debut. Did get up to 100 pitches. Unfortunately, 100 pitches from Mitch Keller is not exactly what you want. So there's that. Corey Kluber on the other side. I expected this going from Tampa Bay, going in Tampa to a great pitcher's ballpark to Fenway, a fantastic hitter's park for the most part. Oh, it's going to be a struggle bus situation here for Corey Kluber. He's now 36 years of age. It's getting a little bit problematic for him. And you saw that against Baltimore. Had nothing in the tank, just 80 pitches. Kind of felt bad for him. Two homers right out of the get-go, too. Don't think he's looking at a great bounce back spot. And I kind of like this Pittsburgh lineup more than the average bear. O'Neill Cruz from the left side, Brian Reynolds. You get a number of other pieces that can be serviceable. Maybe it's Cabrian Hayes' chance to get back, but wanted to talk through a couple of lineups. And from a bullpen situation, Boston and Pittsburgh have nothing in that regard either. So yet another spot where, yes, the over of nine, not looking as though it's like going to be something that can continue to go over and over and over and over, as Marshawn Lynch would say. But I think it goes over here. Nine runs, not enough. Fired up in Fenway. Next up on our tour of baseball, another struggle bus starter, Corbin Burns. Yeah, we're talking about one of the best pitchers in baseball of yesteryear. Really struggled out of the gate. They're going to be hosting David Peterson and the Mets, starting with Peterson, the lefty. We backed him against the Marlins. He looked great, actually. Eight hits was a little bit not ideal, but 11 ground balls, a lot of it being soft contact, got babbiffed a little bit. But that Jesus Lazardo showdown, again, should have taken an under. A little bit, little bit frustrated with myself. Sometimes you make mistakes, and mine there was simply trying to read too much into the Mets. We rectified that, got against them uh, with that 10 nothing schlacking that got put on uh, the other day, but... Didn't really end up on anything Tuesday with the Scherzer numbers being a little inflated. Here, I think we're looking at a spot where I could maybe talk myself into the Mets money line going up against Burns just from a value perspective. But 
Burns, for the most part, it was a Cubs spot where I don't really necessarily have too much to say. I would like to see the Ks come up. Just three Ks there. Not a lot of swinging strikes rate from the get-go, but 11 ground balls, new lineup in Chicago. I'm not sure what to make of a start. It's just one start, so I don't want to overreact to everybody everywhere all at once. Ha <laughs> ha. That was an Oscar joke. So either way, I think we're looking at the Mets here just in terms of a value perspective going up against Burns in case there's a problem. But it's just a lean. I don't really have it graded out that well. If I go anywhere here, probably going to be in the prop department. Off to Arlington. Next up, just like the Corbin Burns spot, we have another starter, Jacob deGrom. We're talking about like the pitching goat for the last couple of years. Came out of the gate slow. He's going to be hosting Austin Voth and these Baltimore Orioles. I'm going to just start with DeGrom on that side of it, because again, if you watch that Phillies outing, it wasn't pretty. Just 73 pitches. They said they were going to limit him between 75 and 80. And the Phillies, their offense has been struggling, except for against that spot, against Jacob DeGrom, which is kind of ironic as it stands right now. So I'm not sure if we need to ring the alarm bells. It was his debut for a new team. He's at least healthy kind of showed like he could get there he did get 10 swinging strikes over the course of those 73 pitches so i'm not going to ring alarm bells on that one either think him and corbin burns got to give them a little bit of a pass a wait and see approach if you will there but i do want to be targeting austin Voth in some kind of a regard we saw bullpen basically situation there he showed up for all of one inning here he's he was stretched out during spring training. I want to throw that out there. So there's maybe an opportunity for him to get into the mix a little bit. But anything I've seen from him in the past is just not all that impressive. This Baltimore bullpen, until you get to their studs in games where you're going through a positive, like positive type game script, I'm looking at you, Felix Bautista. You're an absolute stud. Other than him, I just really don't love anything else from this entire Baltimore rotation. They sent out Lopez to Minnesota at the trade deadline last year, even though they were making a playoff push. I have questions about that bullpen. And Jacob DeGrom, I still think that ammunition is there. So I'm going to be liking Texas minus one and a half here. Target the team, hope for that outlier type situation. And I'm getting plus money to go against two assumptions. Hard to believe on the run line, I can back Jacob DeGrom and get plus money. So we're just going to do that, right? Yeah, we're going to do that. We go to an interesting little situation here with Eduardo Rodriguez, Erod himself, going up against uh, Christian Javier here of the Houston Astros. And Javier did not have his normal stuff right from the get-go. Eight hits, three earned, five innings. Not going to overreact to one start. I'm saying it over and over again. Erod on the other side. Pitched in Tropicana. That's always a big plus for the lefty here. But now you do run into an absolute murderer's row here in Houston. There's a reason that they're massive dogs. But there's absolutely no value to mine out of here. Houston long-term, even though left on left with Jordan Alvarez and Kyle Tucker doesn't seem all that great, they're still going to be effective, especially Kyle Tucker now in situations. Well, Jordan Alvarez doesn't even necessarily have splits, but Kyle Tucker, the stolen base upside that exists in Major League Baseball right now, somebody like him could go for 40 and 40. That would be awfully fun to witness this year, wouldn't it? I think he's extremely live for such a feat. Probably 35 and 35. We'll shortchange him just a tiny bit there. Even against Erod, I think that that's going to be something that uh, you got to be factoring in. Some of these speedsters that exist on the base, even Jeremy Pena hitting at the top of this lineup, Alex Bregman. Even while they wait for Jose Altuve, I like this lineup quite a bit. So I would be leaning towards the Houston money line, but there's no value to mine out of minus 245. That's the best number available over at DraftKings right now. Thought about it. Maybe another parlay piece for you parlay people, but going to probably be a prop or bust spot for me. Now, this one I am excited for because maybe I made a mistake in overvaluing Logan Webb the other day, but I don't really think so. He's going to be going up against Dylan Cease here, and Logan Webb was unbelievable in that debut. 12Ks, the most by a San Francisco Giant on opening day in their history. They've had some aces, whether it was Madison Bumgarner when Madison Bumgarner actually was good. Things of that nature. 50% K rate. Literally 50% K rate for a game. That's always nice to see. A 149 expected batting average. Got those ground balls from last year, but a 14.3 degree average launch angle Maybe sacrificing things at the altar of just getting str swinging strikes. We shall see. Just one start. 
Just one star for Dylan Cease, two on the other side for the White Sox. But my pick to win the Cy Young in the American League got off to a great start. Six and a third innings, 10 Ks. He's so good. 86 pitches there for him as well. The thing I'm paying attention to the most here is the wind. Before I get a little bit crazy in taking this under for a lock, I decided to go the like direction, mainly because seven and a half feels like an inflated number for two guys that just combined to strike out a total of 22 batters on opening day. The wind's blowing in, though. This might be something that I elevate even further to a lock, but it's looking like it's going to be windy uh, over there in Chicago on Wednesday. It's an afternoon game, which generally inflates the numbers, but if that wind's blowing in ever so slightly, I might be upgrading this one considering the Giants' highest K rate so far in baseball through just a few games. And then on the White Sox side, uh, come on, they're just not all that good comparably. So here we go, under seven and a half, my favorite of the like plays for Wednesday. We're going to afternoon baseball in Oakland here as they host the Cleveland Guardians. Kyle Muller on the mound, their opening day starter, and he got a lot of flack on Twitter for maybe being one of the worst opening day starters, and all he did was shut down the Angels. It was not good for me, I bet, against him. But five innings pitched, just one earned, four hits, 72 pitches, eight ground balls. We'll see if he can continue that against a team that does make contact themselves in the Cleveland side. Always one of the best in baseball at avoiding strikeouts, and I project them to be quite the same here. But I look at Hunter Gaddis, the starter, the righty there for Cleveland, they got a, he, I mean, he got very lucky not to have to pull up that, that loss there. Gave up four earned in his debut, 3.2 innings pitched, and don't feel very good about him going forward. That's for darn tootin'. And gotta say, that's kind of my main concern with trying to get anything out of the Cleveland side. Thought about taking it over here, but I would actually be leaning towards the Oakland money line side, mainly because of how bad I believe Gaddis could end up being. Nothing about his pitching profile, just basically throwing uh, bean bags, four seamers, 53.2% of the time between AAA, big league ball. Hunter Gaddis is not good. And Kyle Muller may not be good himself, but you're getting the plus money value. Afternoon baseball game, thought about it, did not pull the trigger, think this game is just a stay away in general. I said I had two locks, and we haven't had the second one yet until this very moment. Shohei Otani going up against Chris Flexen in Seattle. Seattle being one of the best pitchers ballparks that exists on planet Earth here. And Shohei Otani in his debut, just unbelievable. Again, six innings pitched, 10 Ks, only two hits surrendered. Unbelievable that you wouldn't get him the win. But you know what? I guess Kyle Muller was just that good. Kyle Muller's terrible. I hate this. I hate everything about it. But Shohei Otani going up against Chris Flexen, who found a way to be effective. Just 66 pitches. They did go to more bullpen type situations. And I think that might be my main apprehension here. But I do think as he gets extended to 70, 75 pitches in a start like this, I get a little bit excited about backing this Los Angeles offense. I think even without Anthony Redone, who's going to be suspended for this game, Jake Lamb is starting to show resurgent form. I don't think it continues. I'm not sure what to make of it, but he's yet another one of those players like Joey Gallo that the Dodgers took a shot on, and you want to trust what the Dodgers decide to do when they go acquire guys. Hell, they're refurbishing Jason Hayward at the moment, who is completely broken, completely dust there in St. Louis and Chicago. Don't know what else to tell them. Oh boy, Chicago wanted to get rid of him so fast, and now he's out there pulling homers to right field in Dodger Stadium. Just saying, maybe Jake Lamb can be that dude in the platoon type situations. Chris Flexen, kind of been a guy that you want to target a little bit with righty power from time to time too. That's where Mike Trout comes in handy. That's where Taylor Ward comes in handy. And of course, Hunter Renfro, a new addition to this lineup as well. Hasn't had his first jack yet. We'll have to take a look at some of those numbers. Seattle, not the best spot to go try to fire that up. And as much as Seattle's lineup, I think, is underrated with Ty France, a couple of those other pieces, who, oh, Julio Rodriguez heard of him. I think we want to be locking in Los Angeles. I am absolutely backing money lines at minus 145 when it's Shohei Otani on the mound. What are we doing here? Minus 145. This thing should be minus 175 north. If this were an Angels stadium, if this were in Anaheim, this would be minus 200. You cannot tell me otherwise. So I'm throwing the ballpark out the window. Shohei Otani. Got the Ichiro kind of convergence. Japan fans, just saying. Next level stuff. 
That was all just fluff because I just care about the numbers. Show you how Tani's really good. We're locking him. And the only evening baseball game we have rounding out the day, Toronto taking on Kansas City. Let me just check in here on my lock at the moment. 1-1, one, one, bottom of the third. Good stuff. All right. Just want to keep that plus money alive there on the Kansas City side. Back-to-back -back locks. We ended up targeting Kikuchi. Hopefully, that ends up Gucci. <laughs> I enjoyed that, I hope. Nobody? Anyone? Anyone? All right, let's talk this game and get out of here. Alec Manoa on the mound. Going up against Zach Granke, Alec Manoa really on the struggle bus first time, but it's just one outing. Not going to overreact to their ace, even though he's never really had the Ks, and now with just three in that debut against St. Louis. I'd say I do have more question marks about Manoa than I have other players, just in terms of what that profile needs to look like. He's a big dude. Needs to make sure that uh, we're taking care of ourselves, getting ready to rock here in early season baseball. It's a long season, though. I think he'll be just fine long-term at least from being a good pitcher perspective. But Zach Greinke on the other side would be the main reason you want to target it. But it's not like books don't know that Zach Greinke is out there pitching. He's been effective just limiting damage against Minnesota. Found another way to do that. Five and a third, just two earned. Decent enough debut with seven ground balls and four Ks. I'd be above normal for Zach Greinke going forward based on his 2022 numbers, but I don't find this game all that uh, appealing. I'd be looking at maybe the under of nine, considering that's juiced inside of standard minus 110 at the moment, minus 105, but I'm not in love with it. Basically an afternoon ball game there, Kaufman still. Well, no, it's an evening. I guess it'd be 645 their time. Look at me doing math on the fly. There you go. I'm getting out of here. Just leaning on the under of nine. Nothing to see. Nothing to like. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks MLB edition. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell as we get out of here. Again, covering the NBA streets. If you guys want to check out my NBA Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks video, we're just getting going here in the MLB streets. Want to give this all the attention and love it deserves. We got to round out that NBA season here still. Regular season going strong for, uh, what, four four more days. Four more days here. Uh, you'll have Aton over the weekend for that. But uh, I'll be back here per usual on Thursday. Until then, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Wednesday. Mm -hmm.